Bill Burns studio. How cool is this? We haven't seen yes. Bill in a while. What's going on, everybody? Now that he moved out to the left coast. Yeah, man. With the liberals, <laughs> man. He's an What's L.A. guy. Yeah. He used to be a New York guy. Now he's an L.A. guy. Yeah, now I'm totally phony. Yeah, all fake. Because everybody here in New York is real, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the tools are out there. <laughs> Everyone here is decent oh, yeah. and real. All the plastic people are out oh, yeah, there, all, man. It's totally fake. fake. But people here, people here, they just don't lie to you. Right. You know, New York is just great, man. Everybody's they're just so real, man. I can't get over it. Like the cab driver this morning was just, the guy was so real. It was, it was yeah. I almost thought he was fake. I had to just he reach was out. So real. I squeezed his shoulder as I paid him just yeah. to make sure. That, <laughs> Jimmy. Because yeah. used all these fake people. Speaking of cabs, Jimmy and I shared one uh, yesterday after the show. Remember I pointed at the guy's name and I said, remember his name, and now I don't remember. It was something Muhammad is why. It was Hussein oh, Muhammad, right? I didn't know his first name. Okay. Hussein Muhammad. That's nice. Drove me home uh, yesterday. Did he? Why? <laughs> really? That's no. odd. <laughs> no, Mid- middle name Osama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Choppy. I think Choppy from Boston changed uh, the reason why he wanted to call. Weren't you going to talk sports, Choppy? Hey, butt plug, the greatest prank of all time. The best phone call ever. Uh, I have to agree. Thank you, sir. Yes. Are we allowed to play that still, or is it a, a edited mess now that... Uh, the rules have changed I, in radio. I think that's one that we're not allowed to play. Oh, my God. Well, oh, why? Because of the language? Is, yeah. That thing has been played on the radio a hundred times easily. There's no context to it. It's there just was, saying the word. If I remember right, it was the repetition of it. Can the we repetition, at least... but the repetition, it, it doesn't have any context. I'll find out. It's again. just saying it. Yeah, get it, get that done. we got to play butt plug so today. odd. If not, let's at least... Can we at least put the audio up on onaradio.com later today? All right, if we can't play it on the radio, we'll put it up there for everybody. <laughs> Choppy, weren't you talking about sports, too, or no? Sure. Uh, no. <laughs> sure. No, I'll I, roll with it. No, I had Screw some, it. I had someone on hold, and they wanted to explain how awful the Philly fans are. Goddamn Choppy. All right. I'm a Bruins fan. We're worse. Yeah, I'm a Bruins fan. They call me Choppy. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, Choppy. <laughs> I love I love you, Boston guys. I, I guarantee Jeez. that guy is a love hate relationship with us. That guy lives me in, in Boston. In Southie. <laughs> That's a Southie. Yeah. That's a Southie guy. Oh, all right. All right. Well, because <laughs> Bill Byrne, you know, he he loves his sports, and I I thought we had a nice nice setup for a phone call there. And how you don't like talking sports with me? Well, all right. What do you think of what happened to Avery? Wow, I know, yeah. right? That was like, poof. I I heard it and was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I probably things like that take time. Take time to. Yeah, B- resolve. Work themselves out. Yeah, 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 to work themselves out, you know. But I'm sure in the end, things will be okay. Why don't you explain to the new listener to bring up, bring everybody up to Yeah, speed. exactly. The, Av- the Avery thing, it's a big deal if, you, if you're following playoff hockey. So go ahead. Uh, Give everybody the news. Well, apparently he had a lacerated spleen, and he'll be <laughs> fine. Uh, but <laughs> I ruined the bit. I ruined the bit. <laughs> <laughs> bit ruiner. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> the bit was going well, you know. I know. I'm a bit ruiner. Yeah, Avery, uh, he's not playing? He's not playing anymore? He's out. He's out. What yeah. happened? He had uh, he's spleen. playing and uh, kind of lacerated spleen. Turns out uh, there, a doctor on the paper today said you really want to keep your spleen because a lot of people say you can live without your spleen. And there's yeah. doctors going, eh, could they cause problems down the road. take it out to uh, keep people from b- bleeding. Right. You know? But um, eh. it's got to be in there for a reason, right? Ah, just like an appendix. What? <laughs> just like well, a appendix. Yeah, if you don't eat like leaves, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah, or rocks or something yeah. like that. <laughs> That's what they said. Like, like it was there because when uh, cavemen would eat, they would eat a lot of stuff, and then rocks would end up in there, and it would kind of end up in your appendix. Just big rocks, <laughs> and we kind of don't eat they many rocks, rocks nowadays. They never said rocks. I heard rocks. <laughs> not, not even pebbles. Not nah, little pebbles or little rocks. Uh, you would think it would be pebbles and tonsils. Do you know what John McCain when he when he was in captivity? There, there was a certain amount percentage of his diet that actually had some sort of rock in it. 
<laughs> really? He's one of the most hardcore dudes. Oh ever. yeah, his story is ridiculous. Re- I, absolutely, that's why uh, I, I that's why I got to vote for him. I'm starting to think we owe him the presidency at this point. Yeah, I think he he needs it. I think we it. just owe it to him. Well, just, I don't know what he's also bo- rep- representing a group that might be owed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Jimmy brings up a point. I don't know what McCain stands for, but I'm starting to think, ah, maybe we should throw this guy a bone late in life. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike in Jersey, this was the phone call I wanted to go to, and then we're going to go back to politics, absolutely. Mike, what do you got? Yeah, I was at the last game at Veterans Stadium, and the sea of green, this yuppie father and mother come with their two boys dressed in white redskin sh- uh, shirt, and the guy stands up in front of them. Like a uh, a conductor of an orchestra that starts chanting, "Bad parents, bad parents." <laughs> the, whole, the whole place started going bad parents, and they're sitting there with their little nervous laugh and their boys with their perfect haircuts and their little turtleneck underneath, <laughs> right? And so that hey, that calms down, right? And then yeah. another drunk guy stands up behind them, like another orchestra conductor. He starts calling, "Call Dices, call Dices, call Dices." For like five minutes. Take their pa- take their kids away. Yeah, then the minute someone else is dead. All right, you go right now. <laughs> no, sorry, sir. But the guy's rolling. Yeah, he is. They, yeah, they didn't even see the kickoff. They left. Oh, they really? Played. Yeah, I'm telling you, Philly it's, is ridiculous when it comes to their their teams. Very nice. Yeah. Called call Dices? What was he saying? Exactly. That's what I was trying to. And you know what that meant? Yeah. Oh. I'll come and take the kids away. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know what it's an acronym for, but I'm sure it's Department of Something to take your kids away if you're a lousy parent. All right, very, very <laughs> nice. All right, uh, back to politics. Uh, we want to squeeze that call in there. Uh, Hillary's dream date, a Republican. Uh, huh? Conspiracy theorist, uh, Delight. J- uh, we got, uh, Jimmy, we, Bill's got a, j- you're a conspiracy guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, so have <laughs> Buy, heard- buys into them all. <laughs> just, just about the first eighty percent of every conspiracy theory totally makes sense until they get to the part <laughs> the where they go, and then, and then Bush is an alien. You're like, right, ah, you, you ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> you have anything on the Illuminati? We've been. Well, I think they're going to let Obama win. What? They're going to they're let Obama win because they're going to collapse our economy, and they're going to need a black guy to blame it on. Oh, for, as the fall guy. Yeah, Bill is dead serious. And I'll be like, see, the black guy did it. He's only half black. Well, that's the half that did it. Now, is that is that to keep uh, f- black people from becoming president in the future, or is it to keep? No, it's because they. Is they, it to fix the economy by ripping it down to bare bones yeah, and again? They'll say, see, we we have to exist in a world economy. What we have to do is now combine with Canada and Mexico <laughs> and form the uh, North American Union. Right. And we'll now all be on the Amero. The Amero. And then the brilliance of that is... The Amero instead of the Euro. That's good. Yeah. They already did it with Europe. Everybody's yeah, yeah. on the uh, the Euro now. Yeah. You got one currency, one group of guys. They just kind of print that money. And they're gonna it, it unites. That. It kind of unites everybody you, you inch, they're in inching, cash. Yeah, they're inching towards the microchips in the back of our heads. <laughs> wow. I, I love <laughs> Bill, man. Oh, I God, love you, man, Bill the future, you, you mess with the deal. They're just going to turn off your chips. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to happen. Hey, what happened to Anthony? Dude, you hear you t- they turned off his they, chips. They turned them off last week. Where were you? But they're never going to admit that they're turning off chips. It's going to be a heart attack or an aneurysm or something. That's how it's going to be explained oh, yeah, they'll, medically. They'll just, they'll just run a trailer of what a, <laughs> what a D-bag you are, and that'll be it. Wow. That'll, that'll be it. <laughs> I like the Amero. That's pretty good. Like, we'll get on that standard, and it'll battle with the Euro. Every once in a while, you'll see somebody on TV talking about it. Then they go right back to Britney Spears' vagina, <laughs> and everybody calms down again. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's over. Oh, that is great. Yeah. I'm, I'm buying into that one. Dude, I can't. You I, sold I, me. I honestly, I can't, I can't read them anymore, and I can't because you start believing the stuff after a while, and it gets so depressing. You want to, like, jump out a window because you start formulating. Okay, well, if they did that, then I'd go into the woods. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know how to live out there maybe i could go here <laughs> you're not set I, up I, for um like survival in any other kind of no, dude, world I, I can but speak, this one i can speak one language yeah i can only live indoors <laughs> i don't have any guns like you can't be a refugee i have no gold they got me right with where, where they want <laughs> no me no gold i'm yeah. done yeah if you got gold you could you could survive anything if you got guns too yeah. you could yeah. take other people's stuff you need gold guns a donkey in like a satchel <laughs> to carry your gold in the sack. <laughs> yeah. And then just some like, you know, eight year old uh, Honduras kid to be the dude who fetches the, uh, the canteen water you, yeah, or something. Yeah, as like your a Clint guide. Eastwood movie. I was yeah. going to say, you're getting your info from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Bill? Then you start banging a girl who pretends she's a nun because <laughs> she's from LA and she's so phony, man. Yeah, fake. 
Hey, uh, oh, that's great. So this is the latest on Hillary. Asked who she'd go out with on a date with any celebrity, living or dead, and uh, Hillary Clinton chose a Republican. <laughs> wow. Uh, the question: If your husband gave you a pass for one night, this old gag, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and you could go on a date with any celeb, alive or dead, who would it be? Couples actually play this mm. game, you know. And then the fat housewife goes, "Well, I, I'd pick Brad Pitt." Oh. Would you? She should have said like Wesley Snipes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or Yafit Koto. Yafit Koto, <laughs> blacker guy who you know is a oh, pack of please. Boys. Hillary's <laughs> answer. Uh, she she says that's such a dangerous question. Is it? How about Abraham Lincoln? That's who she would have a one night stand. What? With. Yeah, I hope on a certain day when he was signing something. <laughs> she should have said Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> that dude. How, how bad in bed was Abraham Lincoln? You he just has to be awful. That big, boring, gangly, stupid hat. Ew, big, giant feet hanging off the end of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have California kings back then. All she can do is ride him. He's just too damn big. <laughs> He's giant. He's <laughs> Just like a like a retard. I'm gonna say he's another guy that was embarrassed of his manhood too, like our own Anthony. Oh, probably just uh, just freakish in nature. Packing, you think? Oh yeah, Lincoln. Yeah, just embarrassed. He'd make jokes and put his big stovepipe hat on it, <laughs> right. and it would take up the whole thing. He could make the stovepipe hat twitch. Yeah, well, why do you think? Why do you think the hat was so tall to yeah. begin with? That wasn't a fashion statement. That was that was a way of hiding his shame. <laughs> show him, show him the old honest Abe. <laughs> he was a, he was probably a freak too. Grew up all alone in that log cabin out yeah. there, oh, just yeah. alone with his thoughts. Um, <laughs> he as opposed to Jimmy's log cabin, his bathroom. <laughs> he would have cuckold fantasies. <laughs> cuckold. Where, where he like she, he wanted just black guys to bang his wife, and she'd be like, "But they're not allowed." He goes, "I'll free him. We're gonna make this happen." <laughs> <laughs> I can make this work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Come on, we, we owe them. Just bend over. <laughs> he had the same like attitude as the, as the security guard in Goodfellas, but she's like, but who cannot make that happen? You're looking at him. <laughs> Sign a paper. We'll have four or five of them. I'm, I'm the guy. <laughs> um, you want to hear more on Hillary? This of latest, course. This latest dumb interview. This amazes me about uh, these candidates, that they just don't know basic things in pop culture. Another surprising tidbit, despite the 19-hour day she puts in on uh, the trail, she apparently never heard of the energy uh, drink Red Bull. She's never heard of it? Asked if she's ever had one, she replied, no, what is it? She doesn't know what a Red Bull is. How 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 is she supposed to relate to anything? Well, and, it's... And she, you know, she, she wants a lot of the the youth to vote for her, and they're all about the Red Bull. Did you just say how can she relate to anything if she doesn't know about that stupid drink? It, but but it's <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I think I've ever heard. But oh. that's what I mean. She doesn't know what Wonder Bread is. That's how what I mean. How the hell did this person run a country? <laughs> that exactly. Yes, you got. That's know exactly what I mean, but Bill. You, you do You're trying to turn that stuff. against me. I'm saying it's the simple things that people should know about. I'm with Anthony. You got to yeah. know basic stuff. No, it's, you it, don't. It scares yes, me. you do. Did you, you see don't. the video of her trying She's to, She's in like... the Bilderberg group. Come on, man. They don't have time for Red Bull. The what? Re the Bilderberg group. Uh-oh, what's that? Bilderberg? That's is that your... Something else to be scared right of? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh-oh. What's this? I know this group of 100 people. They meet once a year in a hotel. It's not a secret who's there. It's not a secret where they meet or when they meet. But what they talk about is a secret because it, they're really? nervous that the media that they already own is going to misrepresent what they talk about. Wow. That's a good one, huh? All right, so they're throwing the N-word around, is what you're saying, pretty much. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think they're talking about the Amaro. The uh, Amaro? Yeah. Uh, well, they're not talking about Red Bull. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I love it. I, I accept <laughs> I accept everything you say now. It, it's it's, it's so, so... There's such conspiracy. She's from Neptune, on. okay? She should know what Red Bull is. It's on TV commercials. If the woman doesn't even know... to. T TV at all, well, Anthony? She watched the news. Well, just, Anthony, you're, just you're just, common. You're a common person. They don't have time for you. No, just, they don't have time. They, they, they don't have time, they for, don't us. Have time We're for us. We're expendable. We are so insignificant. We are. It just shows you how out of touch these politicians are, though. Thank you. When, when they start talking about violent video games, they, they don't know what they're talking they don't, about. Yeah, they've exactly. They don't a, know what they're talking about. They've never drank a Red Bull. They've never played GTA, so they don't understand the, that that whole culture. Yep. So, so don't talk about something you don't know anything about. It's like hockey. Oh, by yeah. the way, really fast, like she's a New York team. senator. Uh, thank you, Rich O from D.C. Isn't New York soccer team, which well, not a lot of people follow the soccer, yeah, but but the New York soccer team's name is the Red Bulls. Well, see, that's news to me, too. <laughs> no one would know that. <laughs> Who knows soccer? Yeah. Bill raised a point, it. though. Red Bull is not 
it's like it, it's common for us, but she's not hanging out with a bunch of listeners who are drinking Red Bull and vodka. I mean, she's, it's she's not like out it's not even it's hanging not out. Drink. That's what I mean. It's something though. It, uh, you can't turn on the TV without seeing Red Bull commercials. Red Bull's been around it's, a while now too, and if it's she's around, and if she's out there just uh, shaking hands with a lot of different people, I, she had to come across someone no. with a Red Bull in, in their left hand, and she's she shaking gets, their she right. Gets that senator cable. Oh, oh, is that it's, a, it's yeah, a different that, type of yeah, TV? Co- yeah, yeah, there's no commercials. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear? I love it. <laughs> They're watching shows in the future. <laughs> <laughs> See, we don't know yet, but Red Bull's going out of business in 2009. She's already, uh, she's already up to 2011. Uh, lost season five. <laughs> yeah, we, I want to watch it. More about pop, uh, pop culture. And this is why we get frustrated by Hillary. We've been uh, mentioning this over the years. She can't answer a question. Yes, she will not All right. commit to anything. The latest bunch of questions she refuses to answer. Uh, she refused to choose between comedians Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Someone said, who's funnier or who's your favorite, uh, Tina Fey or Amy Poehler? Because they're in that new movie, Baby Mama, whatever. It's a good question to, for right. dumb reporting. Yeah, stupid fluff question. Uh, said she uh, likes both wine and beer, so she will not choose between, you know, if she likes yeah. beer or wine better. That's for men or women. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't select either American Idol or Dancing with the Stars. She looks like an old Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> when Ellen's like 60. <laughs> Gained a few pounds because she's not on TV anymore. Yeah, hip replacement surgery <laughs> from all that happy dancing. <laughs> it's stupid dancing. And then she said she, she said her mother, who lives with the Clintons. Hmm? Whoa. Who knew that? Her mother lives Whoa. with them? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, you know what that is? Whoa. That's Bill having to agree to everything after the Lewinsky thing. She said her mother. Oh, yeah, bring your mother in, too. <laughs> That's great. Great, honey. Loved it. Glad she's here. <laughs> God damn. I hate that. <laughs> hey, two fat bitches around the house. Nothing, baby. Nothing. Bill's a freak. He'll probably try to hook up with her. Oh, oh, yeah. Probably has. Yeah, he walks around like tight slacks with no underpants. Let's <laughs> mom in law get a look. In sweats. Yeah. So it just looks like a tent. I want to be in the vagina that Hillary came out of. <laughs> Very nice. I was speaking of American Idol. Bites dance. his lip and makes his thumb disappear. <laughs> mm, does that thing. Mm. Two speaking thumbs up. Does the shocker. Speaking of American Idol or Dance with the Stars, she said her mother, who lives with the Clintons, keeps her up to speed on both programs. So she's not even watching the, the hottest Stop shows on it. TV. She did, ha- however, choose Weight Watchers over the South Beach diet. What? But didn't elaborate on her what? own eating habits. Why does South Beach deal with the ass and thighs and feet? <laughs> <laughs> Weight Watchers is waist up, she deals with. <laughs> Weight Watchers must be like, gee, thanks. You're great. Thanks for choosing us as you look kind of. Kind of chubby on TV every year. Tall every midget night. body. Fatty. Uh, and she also said she never had cosmetic surgery. People have to d- decide it's what's mean. right for them. It's, it's never be been mean. anything I thought was right for mm. me. So that's the latest on Hillary. Well, she really commits. Yeah, she I had like the that. Teeth of a mule inserted. <laughs> that, was her, that was her plastic surgery. <laughs> Bill had another part from the mule. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, oh, four, well, we five, need this song. Listen to this. Ohio, it's awful. Texas, and on to Penn State. She's going to do it. Give her just a chance, she'll make it. Any glass ceiling, she'll break it. She's going to be your president. Clinton, nothing's going to turn voice. her back now. Straight ahead. Oh. Hillary Clinton, there is nothing she can do. Yeah. Never oh, yeah, sing the second verse. Keep going. This broad is trying to sell it, though, man. She's oh, all yeah. in. Set and vote now. And vote now. Got I get it. Working for us all day? You mean when she's campaigning and not being senator? Here comes the big finish.
answer is. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Wow. oh, wow. Dude, that's why no real person can ever run for president. <laughs> Can you imagine having to sit there during that whole performance and not in the end just say, that, that sucked. That sucked. Embarrassing. Terrible. I was embarrassed for you. <laughs> I was looking down at the floor praying you weren't going to do the fifth verse. <laughs> <laughs> you suck at singing. You have absolutely no soul. You picked a theme from a, a show that's 30 years old. Yeah, kill yourself. So anyways. <laughs> yeah, I want to be president. <laughs> <laughs> right, we As gotta, your next president, you I will. How, you know how bad the inside of her. I just want to say when her stockings come off after a 19-hour day. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, it, yeah, it must smell like the bank robbing mask of a Mac. <laughs> Look, we're not gonna do better than that. So listen, let me do oh, this. Damn it. We got Bill Burr in studio. He's playing Helium Comedy Club down there in Philly uh, tonight through the weekend. Yep. Make sure you check out Bill Burr. He's uh, he doesn't get to the East Coast that often these days. So got a nice opportunity to see what Bill's up to. Also, we're not allowed to play butt plug uh, on the radio uh, anymore, Anthony. Uh, but it will be up on onda.radio.com later today, so you can enjoy that. When we get back... Oh, also, I should remind people, Nick DiPaolo come in today as well, and uh, Bear Grylls from uh, Man vs. Wild. Stop All right. Say hi. And right after the break, another morning zoo bit with Club Soda Kenny. When uh, bad things happen to good people. <laughs> Next on the Opie and Anthony Show. Another busy morning. Nick DiPaolo standing by. He's going to be in in a few minutes. We got oh, Bill yeah. Burr in studio. Uh, he's going to be at Helium Comedy Club in Philly tonight through the weekend down there in Philly. Go you, see Bill. You got uh, Jimmy heading uh, to Pittsburgh today? Yeah, for tomorrow night at the Byham Theater in Pittsburgh, PA. You're going to be on a prop plane, Kenny was telling me no, this morning. No, we're not. Not a prop plane. <laughs> no, no. I, I told, I was, oh. ta he, he's confused. Uh. Why am I confused? Did Are you going to tell Jimmy this after the show? No, 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 no. They, they do fry plot fry. They oh, fry God. I'd love to make a joke. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You could get fired for that, you know. I can't <laughs> get beyond those stupid Miss Meanie glasses he's wearing. Oh, I know. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> punch them off. You're, you're on a jet in the emergency row like you like. Thank you, sweetie. No prop planes for Jimmy. No. no. Not at all. You don't wanna... I trust I'm not going to fall out of the sky, but the wind is too bad. Yeah, it really is. Get blown He's dressed like Rocky today. Well, that's uh, <laughs> Kenny's travel clothes. He, he likes to be casual yep. on, on, yeah. on travel day. It's right. really creepy for all of us. That way I could drool on it. He's got his uh, gray hoodie on. He usually wears suits every day. Yeah. I know it's a travel day when he comes uh, to pick me up in the morning, and he's got, like, that on. <laughs> <laughs> when he falls asleep on the plane and his stupid neck is just lolling backwards over the chair top. And, he... <laughs> and his mouth is open so wide. Oh. Oh. I've never wanted to straddle someone's face so bad <laughs> and give them an oniony surprise. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> we were going to give Club Soda Kenny the big uh, intro for his latest morning zoo bit, but uh, you know he had to come in early to to make sure Jimmy knows he's not on a prop plane, so you're messing up the timing of this bit. But we'll make it work. That's okay. Of course. Uh, before we get to Kenny, uh, a quick look at weather uh, across America. This this sums it up right here. Everyone, what's over where? going to be hot. Shut up. Man, I don't need a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. Oh, no. What? And there's your weather. Yes. Oh, no. What's wrong? Was that a show done by, uh, by, uh, <laughs> special needs folks? No. It sounds like it. It really does. It's, it's actually, um, uh, Kenny down there in Philly sent it to me. It's, um, an, a Haitian weatherman. Oh. The video, if we can link it up on onaradio.com, it would be really funny. But basically, he, he, he's showing the map of Haiti, and it pretty much has, like, the sun and 85 all the way around the island. Like, why Why do you need yeah, a why bother? in Haiti? You why bother? A, you need a crime report in Haiti, not a, <laughs> not a, not a weatherman. And, and this is all he, he did for weather. Everything what's over where? It's going to be hot. Shut up. Man, I don't need a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and out of nowhere, he just looks at her, and, and that laugh comes out of his face. Yeah. And he blew powder at the uh, weather map. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Allen! Lovely group. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need a jacket. Look, I don't need a jacket. You might. 
look, and because it's Haiti, they don't have any really. Oh. They don't have much fashion sense. They're all wearing the yeah. same blazer: the woman, the the the, the co-anchor, oh, the weather the, guy. The host is killing a chicken. <laughs> right. <laughs> Garrett Morris is doing the weather. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and his jacket. Look at it; it just says TV on on the patch. <laughs> TV, Lime on TV. <laughs> well, I guess the H and the I fell off, and he put a T. Oh, and look at, <laughs> <laughs> and look at how many sunshines and eighty are around. There's like a sun uh, graphic yeah. over uh, over the island every like five miles. <laughs> yeah. It says like the temperature is going to be different five miles away. They're, they're doing that dumb Celsius thing. It's so. like the size of Central Park. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be eighty in the north part of Central Park. It's perfect weather. They don't need a weather guy. Yeah. in Haiti, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Hey, let's give. We must a- chop down the big tree. <laughs> Let's uh, let's do Tell the Rwanda. great day for a gang rape with a rifle butt. <laughs> Wrong country, right idea. <laughs> let's do the big uh, intro for Club. Oh, Kenny. Kenny. Radio. Let's morning show Beth. Oh, 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 yeah. With Club Soda Kenny. Okay. It's morning show Beth. We're not in copying the good people. That's right. The latest morning zoo bit we're doing with Club Soda Kenny when bad things happen to good people. Take it away, Kenny. Thank you, GH. Good morning, everyone. This is Club Soda <laughs> Kenny on the Opie and Anthony show with when bad things happen to good people. A six-year-old boy was mugged <laughs> outside a Florida convenience store. The six-year-old went to the store to get food for his grandmommy. Two thugs accosted the six-year-old and demanded that he hand over the $10 bill that he had. When the boy refused, one of the thugs punched him in the face and took the money. Then the boy ran home crying. Look how happy Kenny is. (laughs) That's horrible. That's a bad thing. Yeah. The boy then returned a short time later with his mother. You know, the baby mama. And when they got to the convenience store, the police were already there and arresting the thugs for an unrelated incident. The thugs denied beating and robbing the boy, and one thug was quoted as saying, I'm going to stomp your ass if you press charges. Mm. Well, that was a bad thing. That happened, happened to a good, to a good, boy, a good, yes. good person. Yeah, yeah a little. Well, I mean, you don't know the six-year-old. That's true. You might be a little bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you, you're gonna love this one. All right, all right. <laughs> Was a woman raped on the telephone? What? In 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 a Tunisia, a Tunisian family alleges that their daughter was raped during a telephone conversation with the man. The 30 year old man said he never touched the young woman, but he alleged. Oh, strike that. He acknowledged. He heard her scream when they were totally into an erotic telephone conversation and that she reported bleeding. A lawyer representing the family told the Kuwaiti newspaper the case needs careful investigation because of its unprecedented allegations. Wow. The lawyer Those said... Were, oh, that's okay. Keep going. Uh, no. I don't want to interrupt you. No, I want you to help me. <laughs> All right, get him a shotgun with a toe attachment. <laughs> the lawyer said a medical examination had determined that the woman, 20 years old, was no longer a virgin. The intercourse did take place with all its details, but it was only verbal. The sexual act did not really happen because the physical proximity factor is not there. Yet it happened because there is a direct physical Boring. impact. The loss of the virginity. Right. Uh-oh, this bit's changing. Uh, Stephen S. from Bayshore, when bad bits happen to good listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, but I wish it was a little longer with more yeah, detail. That, a little too long, and where's the uh, bad things happen to good people How is thing? she a good person? Exactly. Not, yeah. Well, that's why I'm having a hard time with this whole thing, because I don't know the integrity of these people. Yeah. 
All right, you got you know, another one? I got a couple more, but like I said, I don't know if they're good, bad, and All right. We got to commit you know. to it, Kenny. Yeah, let's go. Let's. You got to sell the thing. Yeah, yeah, one flag of fun so far. I'm this fun could be it. more like it sucks to be you. Well, we well that's we not the bitch. Yeah. yeah, the the first story was perfect. Yeah. A bad thing happened to a good little boy. All right. All right, let's uh, see if you got another one. All right. Uh, so I'm going to disappoint you. <laughs> no, no confidence now. Add it in. <laughs> a, a judge in Dallas freed a man who served 27 years in prison for the slaying of his girlfriend, and then he was cleared by DNA evidence. Uh, the case still must be uh, formalized by an appeals court or a pardon from the governor. But the guy was jailed since uh, New Year's 1981 after his girlfriend was raped and murdered. Uh, he became the 18th person in Dallas County to have his conviction, uh, uh, you know, cast aside. The guy was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of the 20-year-old uh, girl that he was found sexually assaulted and strangled. Uh, the guy was convicted primarily on the basis of testimony from two eyewitnesses. But officials say one has since recanted, and the other, uh, the accuracy is questionable. One flag! Another one flag of fun. I know. You don't know how to edit, do you? That's more sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just a sad story. <laughs> yeah, wow, he a... lost his whole life and his... Yeah, I, I found one good story with the six-year-old. So maybe we're, we weren't ready for this bit, is what I'm starting to uh, think. Maybe. Who helped you write these? Uh, me, myself, and I. Oh, God. <laughs> he didn't just say that. <laughs> In Worcester, a man couldn't find his aspirin. <laughs> Let me talk about that for ten minutes. Aspirin. Aspirin is a pain reliever. Yeah. <laughs> this is. But if you don't have it, you can't relieve the pain. Kenny? This is kind of funny. All right. Oh, okay. All right, let's try All one right, more. One more. One more. Come on, and big. And All right, York, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Police say a man was killed because he had a similar nickname as the attacker's attended target. Oh no, Ted Nodder got beat up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Po po police say a guy known as Big O was killed April oh. 11th. <laughs> Just missed. <laughs> they pumped him with 18 shots or fired during the attack. Uh... Two men were charged with conspiracy and the homicide. Uh, police say that they were trying to get revenge for a botched uh, drug deal, which uh, one of the guys uh, was shot, and then, you know, they're trying to get revenge. And, you know... Kill flags! I'll give him an extra flag, because yeah. that actually fits the criteria. Yeah. It is a bad thing that happened to a good person, because uh, it wasn't the intended target. Right. Yeah. And this has ha been your Club Soda Kenny. Good things, bad things happen to good people report <laughs> oh, oh. on the Opie and Anthony show. Wow. Starring Opie and Anthony with special guest star special Jim Norton. Guest. He's here every day. And featuring Bill Burr. Coming soon, Nick DiPaolo. Nobody believes me. Thank you, Kenny. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, bill, the bit started off kind of sputtering, all right, and then just died. Oh, you know what? You know went bad when you just end the whole bit going, "All right, <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> that'll be about enough of that." I thought you were ready for that bit. Maybe you got to like spend more time collecting the the bad stories. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should just do one. All right, well, do like the the because that first one. Kenny's had a hot yeah. week, but uh, yeah. I got to tell you, people are going to remember the last thing you did. And, uh, yeah, they're not going to think uh, you're you're so hot anymore. Well, I I do have a phone a phone slam if uh, I can redeem myself. You did another phone slam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can save it for tomorrow, maybe. I'd like to, I'd it. like to listen, hear that. Listen how defeated he sounds. Uh, can we save this, Sam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so you did another phone slam. Yeah, you want to tease it? No, we. You need all the help you can get. I, yeah. I'm hoping that if if this is good, then people will forget that all right, yeah. the last five minutes of radio yeah, sucked a big, <laughs> a big Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> all right, this is your latest phone slam. Yeah. All right. Only and Anthony's phone slam with Club Soda Kenny. Hello. Hello. Who is this? Who is this? What do you want? What do you want? You called me. You've just been phone slammed. What? Who is this? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>
That is so lame. I sounded really heavily edited. Yeah. But that's, that's what they do in the It is the zoo, perfect so. morning zoo type phone slam, so right. I'll yeah. give it to you. That's fantastic. Oh, you want to go to the funnel meter on that one, Ant? Yes. Six flags, more flags, more fun. Right, hey, there that. you go. More flags, more you. fun. We were going to say that for tomorrow, but we figured you needed the help. Yes, thank you. I did need the help. All thank right. You. We were going to tease that for tomorrow, but you know what? We just threw that in there because, man, we, got to, we had to get your average up for today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> people are saying that. Uh, well, no, not people. Ken, uh, Stephen S. from Bayshore writes, Kenny turned K-Rock into Z-100. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Louisiana. Bruce in Louisiana, what's up? Yeah, I got two things. One is, couldn't Kenny find a nun working in a soup kitchen getting raped by a homeless guy? That's a bad thing happening to a good person. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> tries to make his own little response to it. And then he goes, yeah. and uh, oh god, right, that one did didn't work. Any, oh, any air one. of confidence came right out. His torso <laughs> collapsed <laughs> with the lack of laughter. He got the wind knocked out of him. He really did. <laughs> if he wrote that down, he would have put parentheses and then it wrote. Pause for raucous <laughs> up laughter <laughs> from hosts. <laughs> I was waiting for the car crash. It never came. No, you got one flag. Uh, what's the next one? Yeah. Um, well, it should be Opie and Anthony show featuring Jim Norton's special guest appearance, Bill Burr. Yeah, That's of right. course. However he phrases and, it. And it also says on the screen that you want to say that Kenny is dumb. Yeah, he's a dolt. I mean, damn, he couldn't find a better the bad thing happening to a good person. I mean... Yeah, a little black kid walking down the street with ten dollars. I mean, yeah, he probably stole it from somebody to begin with. Oh, you know he's black, why? So say that. Oh, you expect why? That from Louisiana. It's Louisiana. Or, of course, you expect it from Louisiana. Jesus, Louisiana! You're really busting right. apart those stereotypes. Let's go to Steve. Steve, you're on the Opie and Anthony show. How's it going? Hey. Hey, I called in yesterday to say he needs more skits, but after that, I think you should. Uh, Decrease his time in half. Kenny, wow, you're in the trouble. polls. That's how polls change with politicians yeah, yeah. when things happen. Yeah. Because uh, Kenny was riding high. Oh, yeah. He was. Just yesterday. People were like, I love this guy. He does and traffic I've... and weather together on the 8th. Bill, it's it's one of the greatest things. <laughs> love it. Here, man. But now, you know, people heard this and now they're all like, ah, uh, I don't you know. like him anymore. Get him off the show. He's like Rocky Three. He's just got too relaxed and comfortable. Sure. Yep. You know, he's not really putting in the effort anymore. No, he's no. Like winking at the camera. Too he's much. not in the, you know, the smelly old gym. No. Kenny, you got, you're going to have to redeem yourself next week. I know you're not here tomorrow because you're, you're, you know, taking care of Jimmy this weekend, but uh, you got you need a big one for next week. I do have some happy news for right now. What is it? Do you, do you want me to? or What is it? Wait, 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 what do you got? He's got more I don't know what he's doing. This is a mystery. No, no, no. What was he suggesting? Uh, Well, it's a plug. All right, hold on. We'll do that going into break. Uh, Let me say hi to Sean in North Carolina. Sean. Uh, That caller from Louisiana. Talk about bad things that happen to good radio shows. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, sir. Boy, he fell right out. Uh, Scott in Cleveland. Good morning, Cleveland. They're stunned. I think their listeners yeah. just stunned. Good morning, boys. Good morning. They stopped like an Independence Day. Everyone, the traffic has just stopped. Just, <laughs> what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta apologize, guys. I'm sorry. Yesterday I called in. I heard you talking about Rachel. See, I thought you meant Rachel Ray, the girl on TV with a cooking show who's married with with kids. Rachel Steele, our uh, mid girl, uh, midday uh, girl DJ. She's a uh, Completely single and child free. Holy you dummy! You, you just you you know how bad you you effed up yesterday. Are you an yeah. ass? The the girl yeah, that follows I, us I in Cleveland. Shut up! Out of myself. All right. The the girl that follows us in Cleveland is this girl Rachel Steele, and everyone and Go- everyone went and Googled this girl yesterday. But then Scott calls up and goes, "Hey guys, uh, she's married with a kid." Which <laughs> kind of blew it for a lot of people out there. And One now flag. we're finding out that she's single and doesn't have a kid? Six lying. flags! Huh? More flags! More fun! Unless he's lying. Unless he's lying? I don't know. Maybe they're mad that he said that on the air. They're like, no, we're not supposed to say well, that. Well, he's saying he was thinking of Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray. So Stop now we're starting Rachel to think Ray. that this hot Rachel Steele might be uh, the real deal. She, she has uh, publicity shots, uh, Bill, on the website. Mm-hmm. She's wearing little teddies and stuff. She's a lovely girl. To promote her uh, radio show that it's comes a, on after us in it's Cleveland. It's a girl on the radio that's actually, like, hot. Hot, sexy. And who's that all about? And has no problem showing uh, the world how hot she is. All right. Uh, Bill Burr's here. He's playing helium in Philly. 
Huh? A beautiful girl. Yeah. Beautiful girls. Kit Kat Club. Oh, Jesus. Now, see, now I got a picture. Yeah, yeah now you got there a visual. We go. she's, oh, all right. She's, uh, That's good stuff. Show them that uh, picture. She's whoring, no, she's whoring it up. Show them yeah. the first picture. Where she's got a little like, like kind of like a little like army type hat on, and she's got a little like uh, teddy on, and she's putting her headphones on, getting ready. Early nineties R and B kind of shot. Yeah, the pick another, pick another one. There, look at that. Look at that, huh? Oof. Holy mother of <laughs> clam <laughs> spread eagle. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Nice red shoes. Her legs are open. Very That's lovely. pretty good. I want to apologize. She got nice stems. Yeah, I want to apologize to Adam Twelve uh, that follows us uh, in Boston on BCN. Yeah, who? Sorry, dude. Now we like chicks. He takes a back seat. <laughs> yeah, you sure now. Do. Hot chick. All right, Kenny, what do you Hot got? Chick. But please make it fast. I see the. <laughs> I see the script. It's, Hot a, it's chick. Did I say? That? Yeah, yeah, you did. I, <laughs> I see the plug is Smack one, me. two, three, four, like five paragraphs. Can you just uh, give the basics, please? Yes. Big announcement, Opie and Anthony's traveling virus is returning for another year. Oh, Christ. Bill, you want in this year? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm down this year. <laughs> <laughs> and we want the loyal listeners to have the first shot at getting the good tickets. Tickets go on sale this Saturday, May 3rd at 9 a.m. Ticketmaster.com. For what, Kenny? The PNC, August 2nd. All right? So this is the big show. We're not doing shows in Boston, D.C., or Philly, so get your tickets to PNC, August 2nd. Tickets go on sale Saturday, May 3rd, 9 a.m., Ticketmaster. We All kind right. of wanted to take a year off from the ONA traveling virus. Yeah. And we do so well <clears throat> for the PNC, they insisted. They're like, no, we, we want you guys. Dragged yeah. us back in. So uh, we're definitely doing the PNC. We might do Buffalo. We, we're trying to see if we could get something uh, going for Boston as well. But we wanted to, literally, we wanted to take the summer off, but now we're committed to at least one, if not two, and maybe maybe a third. Maybe a third. Right, Kenny? Tickets go on sale <laughs> Saturday, May 3rd, 9 a.m., Ticketmaster, for ONA Traveling Virus at the PNC Bank Art Center, Saturday, August 2nd. All right. Uh, we got to take a break. I, I want to apologize to Nick DiPaolo. Before this break, I said, look, we're backed up, man, but we'll get you on this. Oh, awesome. I know. He's sitting there listening to this crap going, they didn't get me in because they needed to do that club. <laughs> because because of that? that? He's probably asleep. Yeah, he's like, are you kidding me? We just thought it would be a little better than it turned out to be. And uh, also, uh, Bear Grylls from Man vs. Wild coming in in about a half hour. You're kidding? Yeah, he's, uh, he was just on Good Morning America, and he's coming in to say hi to us. <laughs> All right? All right. Coming the it's the, it's the first and first annual <laughs> baby throwing contest. Stay tuned for details. We was making it here. me Oh my god. Well, this is the house next door. Yeah, I know. That's a toe tapper. <laughs> this is the sign they were playing. The other day I, I walk into my gym. People want to work out. You know, no one wants to be there. You yeah. think you'd play some uplifting something to get you going. Yeah. It's just this fuck. Oops. Whoa. Uh -huh. Sorry. That's okay. You Sorry. only set it up to the sea. Oh, I did. That's fine. <laughs> uh, Opie and Anthony. Yeah, did we Bill just Burr. lose all of that? No, that's all right. Bill Burr was explaining during the break that, um, you know, he's been working out lately because when he moved out to L.A., they have such great fast food joints. He may have gained a few LBs. He wasn't happy oh, with yeah. himself, so he joined the gym. And he works out at night, and they actually have a DJ. Yeah. Which is at, bad enough. At the gym. He's got this little That's CD odd. thing, and this is the song he's playing as I came in. Country have version. Mercy, have a mercy, Lord. You shook me all night long. I think oh. That's Hey C. Dixie. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, really? <laughs> is that necessary? This is, this is what you're coming with? This is what's... Yeah. At least play an awful Journey song, something like the typical bad gym music. <laughs> Don't stop believing, you know? Yeah, this guy... Don't stop go, believing yeah. that you can get in shape. Believing in myself. Yeah, man. <laughs> CNC Music Factory or that other crap they usually play there? <laughs> soul to Soul. Or the what gym dan, is that, dan, 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 This is, uh, this is <laughs> one out... In it's out in Silver Lake, the bodybuilder gym, and it's, uh, I believe it's, it's like literally like ground zero, like the first AIDS breakout was, I think, in this <laughs> yeah, gym. Yeah. You might, might want to wipe down that bench yeah. before you do some flies. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, if you look at like the pictures, 
from like they they like you know they just celebrated you know since like 1978 and everybody back there you just look into that guy died he's dead he's, he's gotta dead. be oh yeah, yeah. No, uh, they, they got they got the awful mustache yeah. the Tom Selleck mustache <laughs> yeah. too much hair my, on my their body yeah the Freddie Mercury tank top <laughs> you're just like all right this guy's <laughs> hair on their traps not a good sign yeah. <laughs> uh, Nick DiPaolo in studio. Nick's uh, playing. Where are you playing, Nick? I'm at the uh, brokerage tonight uh, and then Governor's this weekend. Very, the same very place cool. I was playing in 92. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody could just shoot me in the head and put me out of my misery today. I'm hoping to get paralyzed on the West Side Highway on the way home. I'm gonna sk- I still have to go, but, <laughs> but you know, it's good to be. Jesus. Good to be back, though, huh? It's good, yeah. I found I found my like notebook with jokes in them in the green room from like 1992. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's terrific. Mm. Can't wait to get back. No, actually, great clubs. He'll be packed. Guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary runs a smooth operation out there. We, we set up a bunch of wine, gla- a bunch of champagne glasses one night, and he pretended he was going to sneeze and knock him over. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Remember? Uh, the Rachel Steele uh, thing continues. Now people are saying that she is married. Uh, Josh she in is. Cleveland. Josh. Hey, good morning, boys. Love the show. Thank you, sir. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. apparently Scott from Cleveland's a uh, bit of a dummy because about three or four months ago, I think Rachel took like a week and a half off or something like that for her honeymoon. Oh, really? Oh, so she's very yeah. recently married? Uh, yeah, within the last, I'd say, at least within the last six months because mm-hmm. I remember... Mm-hmm. Before I had the XM, I was listening to her midday, and all these retards from Cleveland would call up like they had a shot with her. Well, <laughs> you, you, you really broke our hearts, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. All these un- unrealistic retards think they're going to date some hot DJ. Yeah, t- chicks are like that, too, and they're like, oh, yeah, Brad Pitt, yeah. he's with this one. Yeah. Well, there goes my shot. <laughs> yeah, okay, so have some more Entenmann's. <laughs> Slob. <laughs> 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 That's when you know you're out of shape, when you're eating cake with jelly in it. <laughs> Just trying to get that extra le- level of sugar. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever play that game with your ex aunt? The, the, one, the one person you were allowed to have sex with if, if you met them? Yeah, but I, I got the old hack line. I, I picked somebody that was attainable. <laughs> but whoops. Oops. I, apparently, it didn't go uh, well. <laughs> yeah, there's this chick at work, man. It wasn't, yeah. It wasn't. Uh, it was right. uh, it's, not, it's not my problem you picked Brad Pitt, man. Yeah. It was a problem with the wife. Right. I picked any girl I can get. <laughs> right. That was it. Why, why would I pick a celebrity? <laughs> I just noticed yeah. she's always looking at me and she touched my arm the other yeah. day. I'm telling you, you know. So, uh, yeah, so we uh, had sex. Yeah. Where, where are you going? My girlfriend and I played. I named her grandmother. I really gave her the creeps. <laughs> so if you uh, no yeah. giant CT. What's up? What's up, Nick? I thought you were leaning over know. the couch. All these headphones are doing the same thing you've done in the, in the last twelve times I've been in uh, here. Is there Nothing another? Uh, I can't hear myself. Now I can hear. It. Well, a little bit. Yeah, who gives a? Does it really? You want to sit over there? We can get you a nice. What if the one that works? No, I'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, CBS. What are they going to give some get to Radio Shack? These chooches. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Nick. Look at it. It's like backstage at a Who concert. Nine guys working on one seat. One, Over here? One ja- wherever you want to go, Nick. Yeah. We already, uh, I, think we already, thing. Yeah, per- I think we already pissed off Nick thing. by making him wait so we did no, no, so we, no. so we that dumb, him on the couch. So we did that dumb club soda Kenny bit. And now his Nick's headphones aren't working. With it. I, haven't, All right. I haven't taken a dump in like three days. And I just, yeah. Metamucil yeah. works wonders. Back up. Yeah. Do the Metamucil. <laughs> sure. Metamucil. These guys take <laughs> Metamucil. <laughs> yeah, man. Jimmy can't <laughs> stop talking about it. Or, or Opie. They love their <laughs> Metamucil. I, I actually drink it with food like it's a, like it's tang. I like, <laughs> like I a like beverage. It. Oh. Actually, the orange flavor is very tasty, right, Jimmy? Yeah, but Jimmy does beverage. that before a date. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he, he gives it to the up. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Metamucil. Straight. It makes it look like snakes in a can, though, man. It's, you want to <laughs> talk about? That's the effect I was looking for. Snakes. <laughs> you want to talk about? You want to talk? about ex, you know expansion uh, this this oh, metamucil geez. will do that for you what is that it? was peanut brittle yeah, it's, just, it's, it's just, just liquid fiber yeah pretty much it tastes like tang though it's right next to geritol that's like the old person aisle. exactly it kind of yeah. is in the old person depressing aisle. i saw the other day like they have uh the the elevated toilet seat you seen that like you're so old you, you're, you, you can obviously, with gravity, get yeah. your old ass down to the toilet, yeah. but yeah. you don't have the quad strength to get yourself <laughs> back up after you took your 90-year-old dump. So they have literally, <laughs> like, I swear to God, it's like a two-foot spongy 
<laughs> seat thing. You're almost you're almost like your legs must be like a you know Humpty a, Dumpty. A, yeah, forty five degree. <laughs> There's a lot of splash, is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, a lot of splash. yeah. You don't want to be dropping one from ten feet. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, Jesus. you have to. All of a sudden, you have to worry about <laughs> aim. That cold <laughs> water might wake you up. Yeah. Now they break their tailbone with the surfs crashing back. <laughs> oh, I think uh, crap from a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, no, I just, to... I'm just looking. You just get depressed when you just see something like that. What like, do you mean, well, Billy? Am I, I going to need that someday? To that it's point. like a Nerf, Nerf yeah. toilet seat. I'm literally, yeah, it's literally. Uh, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That won't absorb germs. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, nice and spongy. So you know, what it's like, you know the uh, the old dental chairs, that awful padding that they would have. Just picture <laughs> that times ten, in the shape of a toilet seat. <laughs> Sitting on a pair of goalie pads, <laughs> and you got to put it on. You got to put it on your walker as you're bringing it up to the to the. Yeah, yeah because the rest of the family doesn't want to use it. Is this what we get looked forward to? Oh my god! No, that... so when you buy it in the store, you just got to put it around your neck. Just we should be holding under <laughs> your walker. There's some awful things in pharmacies when you're just walking around. You see and just go. It's oh, depressing. Just it's all hell, right? Just done. The walkers and the canes. Yeah, they're the always cane silver with, the... with no paint on them. The, <laughs> yeah. the old fashioned crutches, you know, that go around your forearms. The old cripple crutches. Yeah, yeah, the, the crippy, polio, polio crutches. crutches. Yeah. And then there's the little the the cane that you can't even walk with a cane. It has to branch out into four prongs at the bottom. Yeah, what is that about? It's like you can't you can't use one cane, <laughs> one a one pronged cane. Right. Oh, then, then, like then they a cane have, with training canes on it. Then your shoes either come in beige or like overcast. <laughs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> Put a number on the back of them. <laughs> tend to tell them I'm bowling or something. I love those canes with the four, yeah, the four, four prongs. prongs on them. A couple of fondue forks. And I'd love to know how much money tennis ball manufacturers make for the amount of tennis balls that have to go on the walkers for some reason. Because the old codger can't pick it up, they got to drag it along with them, and they put the little orange tennis balls on there. Yeah. And it's got to be depressing as a person to sit there and watch probably your son or your daughter or something, cut the little hole in the tennis ball so they could <laughs> shove it on your walker to g get your old ass around the house. It's an object that's used in athletics, but you're using it so you don't collapse in the street. Right, yeah. so you don't fall <laughs> down from the ex uh, uh, from walking. You're, you're forgetting the best one, though. How about the the walker with the, the handbrakes? Yeah, there's walkers with handbrakes oh just in case it gets God. away from you. Yeah, what is that? In case, it, in, 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 in case, case that runaway truck. <laughs> in case you get up to a one mile per hour. Yeah, you might have you to could, slow down. You could slow it down a bit. I don't Jeez. understand the walker with the handbrake. That's horrible. And they've put, like, baskets on. It's just, it's true that <laughs> when you get old, you just do revert right back to infancy. Because what, what was it when you were a little kid? They'd, they'd pop you in the little walker, and you'd walk around <laughs> with the wheels. And then you get old, you the same thing. You're, there was a stupid walker. Taking your first steps, leaning against the coffee table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the straight legs. Yeah, you got diapers on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Overhouse. just depressing. Absolutely. Why? Let's, let's go to Philly. Uh, but let's remind people, Bill Burr is going to be at the Helium Comedy Club uh, tonight through... Uh, you doing Saturday. Oh, Saturday. 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 All right, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Helium Comedy Club for Bill Burr in Philly. What's up, Tom? Yeah, guys. Uh, me and my dad got my grandfather a raised toilet seat. Yeah. And he was very happy because I guess it was the first time in two years that he didn't have to wipe his scrotum dry. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I had to dry off my sack. Oh, that's wow. hilarious! Thank you, Tom. Larry, Pennsylvania, what's up? Hey, um, I listen to. I'm a converted Z100 listener, and um, I, I would say this guy Jimmy over there is, is freaking hilarious. I started listening to you guys because they've been talking about you guys, uh, saying that you guys have been hassling them and stuff because this number one rating stuff. And I converted over, and man, this radio is just much different. You guys are much more funnier. Hmm. Come on. This sounds like a setup. <laughs> yeah, it it does. Does. That was it's that. Like, we're all so paranoid. It's like, okay, where is it? Yeah, Come on. I, I mean, we, <laughs> we're, we're all fishing Ron for compliments every three. day, but this Ron one is, sounds a little too fake. <laughs> Ron and says, noon to three. Ron and says, noon to three. All right. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Let's say hi to Adam on Long Island. Adam. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hi. Um, yeah, the pharmacy. Do you ever see those old guy UV uh, sunglasses? Oh, yeah. Like, on yeah. the entire face? <laughs> yeah, they look just like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's when your uh, Terminator glasses. You have your cataract surgery, and yeah. they got to pop these big, nasty, dark sunglasses on you. Hundred and two year old welder. <laughs> <laughs> Could you just put a trailer hitch on your truck there? It's, it's it's 
<laughs> if you have if you have old people like you know in your family, it really sucks because your conversations you know come down to where the cheapest gas is. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Oh, they talk about the weather and and where the the the, the specials are. And they're ruining the downtown. <laughs> the downtown. So I was since the Walmart came in, <laughs> nobody goes down. It's terrible. Yeah, like they were doing well without the Walmart, right? Yeah. At, le- at least the Walmart is <laughs> yeah, that some stamp business. Coll- that stamp collector store <laughs> sure. was really a hot spot downtown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, we got an awful best uh, best man speech. Something we like uh, like to do every once in a while on the show. Um, Danny found this on the internet. He says, uh, "Thumbs up to this." So let's uh, let's take a lesson. How many uh, you guys ever do the best man speech? I've done one with Voss. Oh, oh, Bonnie's yeah. wedding. In wow, how'd that go? It's fine. You know. Yeah. But what could you say? Did look, you get look, choked up? No. Ugh. For her, like, look what <laughs> you're marrying. <laughs> <laughs> this blithering idiot when he was doing his, his nuptials. He had to repeat after what the woman said, and just to watch him attempt to repeat what she said accurately, he is as stupid a human being as you're ever going to meet. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I didn't get nervous. There's no way I could have done worse than he did. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just... All right. Uh, uh, Shane in Tennessee. Shane? Hey, what's up, boys? Hey. Hey, will you play the uh, the good old boy from Alabama for, uh, for uh, Bobby and Nikki, please? I think they'll get a kick out of it. Bill and Nick. Yeah, whatever. Uh, well, it's a, it's kind of important for these yeah, guys. Bill Burr and Nick Apollo. Bobby and Collins was in here. Yeah. All right, we can play really fast and do the uh, best man speech. This is all the rage. Yesterday, we uh, Danny got us some audio of this uh, politician, this uh, congressman, Alvin Holmes, uh, from Alabama. And uh, he's discussing whether to raise legal alcohol limit of beer. Basically, he doesn't want the... Oh, I heard a little on the way in. Oh, you did? Yeah. Bill, did you hear this, too? No, no. Okay, listen to this guy. What color is he? (laughs) He looks like Clay Clay Davis from uh, The Wire. The the beauty of this this audio, the guy is trying to... (laughs) Trying to talk about beer, but he doesn't know beer. Like he's he he decides he's going to name a bunch of beers, and after Budweiser, he runs out. He can't think of another beer after Budweiser, and then his buddy helps him out, and that's where the laughter ensues. That he can't, and he can't conjugate a verb. But yeah, yeah <laughs> that's what I know. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? I mean, the beer we got drank pretty good, don't it? There you go. That's a congressman. I ain't never heard nobody yeah. complain. About the uh, beer we have, it drank pretty good. There you go. Huh? Budweiser. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of some of them other beer? Budweiser and what is Miller. He's a congressman. Miller. Yeah. Cool's yeah. Up. It drank pretty good, don't it? What a racist country, huh? Wow. He's not, <laughs> There's no way that guy's a congressman. No, yeah, he's, he uh, he's in the House of Representatives. He's a... Uh, there you as go. what? Representing a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Ignorant fool. Do we got to lower the standards? Out of fairness, just destroy, destroy the country. It's, uh, ugh, you've got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. If I ever hear this country call races again, I'm going to poke somebody in the fucking eyes. <laughs> Can't you drink no beer down there? Hey, yeah. man, drink it. Beer, what a mill. Mill. That's a congressman. Yeah. Really? Mm hmm. <laughs> Where do you get his degree? DeVry? Well, Chooch. he's State House of Representatives in. Uh, the lovely state of Alabama. He should be washing the toilets at the state house. That's what he should be doing. <laughs> but probably not much to choose from in Alabama. No yeah. offense. <laughs> probably, probably the brightest one they had. Are oh. you kidding me? <laughs> Pretty amazing. Unbelievable. So we got this awful best man speech. Want to hear it? All right, here we go. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know I was going to be speaking so uh, soon. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Someone once said that um, oh, being the best man is like making love to Queen Elizabeth. Sure, it's an honor, but no one wants to do it. <laughs> um, Look, this girl's laugh. Huh? Oof. Should have got more. Boo. It, it, but those, you hear the women giggling? Yeah. Because they're like the best comedy audiences. <laughs> <laughs> they were actually laughing at chicks. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep it uh, short and sweet. He's sweating. Uh, we uh, all need to get our food and everything, but uh, I'm going to say a couple words about my brother Ed. Um, <laughs> I've never known someone to have higher moral standards than my brother Ed. 
In fact, the only thing tighter than my brother's morals uh -oh. Uh -oh. is his underwear. <laughs> I mean, come on now, we're talking about a guy who would only agree to have a stripper at his bachelor party if she was Christian. <laughs> but, you know, that aside. I want to say, uh, Ed's a great guy. Uh, America has talent. <laughs> How great is he? What's <laughs> 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 amazing, Rachel? I'm not saying it's raining out. But, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> His setups were like, hey, hey, I'm not saying he's tight. We're judging but this guy. So is his wife. We're judging that's him like he's a comic. Yeah, that's what I thought was coming. And then the f father comes up and punches him in the face. <laughs> right. We're talking about this guy like he's like he's on Evening at the Improv. He's just some guy <laughs> talking about his brother <laughs> in a way. But he still should try be, to be funny. He still should be hit with a full Heineken right in the bridge of the nose. <laughs> you <laughs> only hope he man. was. All right, so we don't have to play anymore. Then? I want to definitely want to hear. Right. Guy's the rest of him. Guy's got, Maybe, so he's got pizzazz. He could be opening. There's another thing I know about it. He loves Colleen with all of his heart. Ugh. And half his... For all the tough times, they've always found a way to reconcile and become stronger. Oh, Jesus. Like when he cheated on her. Yeah, yeah that's basically, that's basically yeah. what he's getting at. He gave her herpes. <laughs> prom. <laughs> Looks like somebody put a cigarette on her lap. <laughs> you reconcile that one, dink? <laughs> They've always found a way to reconcile and become stronger. Their love is as certain as the destruction of Uncle Frank's liver. <laughs> Uncle Frank is a drinker. Oh, Let me tell you, Uncle Frank is a drinker. Yeah. I know that Uncle Frank. He likes to throw a few back. Yeah, huh? <laughs> he's probably at the table. He's held up his drink. Yeah, I'm a drunk. Oh, what? look at Uncle Frank. Yeah. Dude. Wouldn't it be funny if Uncle Frank never drank and he just had liver cancer? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Uncle Frank's a good man. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, my brother never failed, unlike Aunt Edna's kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> my brother is not a good golfer, unlike Grandpa, who had a massive stroke. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, folks. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, I love him. Ed will always catch a carriage if you throw it, unlike Aunt B. <laughs> what the? I miss uh, 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 <laughs> She was still a little choked up when they brought out the rare roast beef. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> of Uncle Frank's liver. <laughs> what? Their love is as sure as Frank's need for Viagra. No. Uh oh. Their love. Well, you get the picture. They have an incredible bond. He bailed out. He's killing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! He is an alcoholic. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> He's beaten me for years. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes a blue pill every time he babysits for us. <laughs> oh, Frank rules. Uh. <laughs> no, but all seriousness aside. Ah, aside. <laughs> Destroying. <laughs> no, but um, I wanted to say um, I can't imagine a better bride for my brother than Colleen. And I want to let them know that uh, just as Ed has always been there for me, I will always be there for Ed. And I'd like to give a toast. Long life and eternal happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, my God. He was, uh, well, he, he was killing with them, that's yeah, for sure. Right. Bringing up uh, the drunk. <laughs> they all that's, know that. Uh, Uncle Frank likes to drink. Uncle Frank sitting there. Touching a child. <laughs> yeah. No, you know he was laughing it off then, but later on, after yeah. he really got boozed, yeah. the depression of what his, he has yeah. become. <laughs> Just an awful man. He's he's dancing with a, a young uh, girl on his shoes, like Abe pre pressing her head, <laughs> the back of her head. <laughs> oh, no. What? Oh, no. Just, come on. He's an awful man. He's horrible. Yeah. I hate him. How awful is it? Drunk he? Uncle Frank. All right. big, is that his name, Frank? Big clear glue stain on his slacks. <laughs> Good old Uncle Frank. Baby's teeth marks on his cumberbund. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Uncle Frank is a pederast that we hate his house. <laughs> She'd die already. Uh, <laughs> it's more likely to have to knock on doors and alert neighbors than Uncle Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, someone is suggesting that guy got all his jokes from Voss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uncle Frank marched two more miles. We'd have all the oil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick, where are you going to be? we got to take a break. I'm going to be at the, bro the brokerage tonight, which is what, Belmore, Long Island, I believe? I really don't know. I've oh. never been there. <clears throat> yeah, the brokerage in Belmore. Very good club. And, and Governor's uh, tomorrow night and Saturday night. Very nice. In, which, in Levittown, which is, you know. All right, we'll, we'll have fun. We're going to continue up next. I think uh, Bear Grills from Man vs. Wild. <laughs> we're back with the Opie and Anthony show. We got Bill Burr playing Helium Comedy Club in Philly Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We got Nick DiPaolo at the brokerage tonight and Governor's uh, tomorrow night out there on Long Island. Yeah, and Saturday. And Saturday. And uh, uh, Governor's Friday and Saturday. Okay. And now Bear Grills has entered uh, the studio. Uh, we got a full house. And and is the knife a warning not to ask you about uh, staying in hotels or something? Because <laughs> a knife. I've got a knife. <laughs> I think he's had it with questions about hotels because he walked in with this like ridiculous knife that he wanted to show off. <laughs> yeah, the like Rambo alligator. I thought it'd be nice for you guys to see some of the you know, some of the kit. But anyway, there he we go. He was showing us how to use a flint, uh, like to start a fire. Because I guess people ask you how you start a fire with a with a knife, and it obviously works because it sparks. Yeah, well, actually, it, uh, the other day I was sitting in the jungle. It was tor such torrential rain. You know, we we wouldn't be able to have a conversation. And I was sitting there trying to get a fire going, and it just wasn't happening. And I end up with a load of grass stuffed on my shirt, and my pants, huddled up in a ball, thinking, "This is officially no longer." Fun. <laughs> so the flint failed me on that occasion. You but anyway, should, there you we should go. just bring matches with you. <laughs> Do you know? The I remember when I started scouting, age about four, and the first my, my first mission ever was that I was given a sausage and a match, one match, and told <laughs> to cook the sausage. And mm. I remember thinking, "Would well, I light it and hold it over it?" Or <laughs> that's been a mad road since. Did then. you succeed? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I did. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I had, I had my father give me one of those tests once. He gave me a single shot, twenty-two, and one bullet, and because uh, I was camping, and he goes, uh, "Here you, you go. Here, here's your dinner." <laughs> I was out in California. Wait, what did you what, do? South Central? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah was, wait, what did he do? He gave you. He a, gave me a single shot rifle, okay. twenty-two rifle, bolt right. action, and one bullet, okay. and said, "Here's your dinner." Mother bullet. Now you got to. And I had out. to go out and I had to shoot a rabbit, and you know, skin it and gut it and and cook Jesus. it. You didn't uh, shoot a rabbit with one bullet, did in, you? In L.A.? No, no, it was not L.A. It was Sunset. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was actually San Juan Shut Capistrano, uh, California, <laughs> Orange County. Who's your dad, Davy Crockett? Mother Hill. Yeah, tell me about it. And uh, I, I actually uh, grabbed a handful of shells when oh, he wasn't okay. looking, <laughs> and you got and dumped them in my pocket. And thank God I did, or I would have starved. Yeah, my first three shots missed the little bunny. Well, that's brilliant. That's good. I remember the first ever thing. I remember shooting a little robin. I was about six. I was so excited. I spent hours stalking this thing. Little shot it, and I was so upset. I gave it yeah. a full funeral, buried it, and like, you know. yeah, it makes you feel all bad. I felt terrible, but uh, <laughs> yeah, got over it. I was hungry. <laughs> I had to eat. And did that knife go through an alligator's uh, skull or something? You were saying we were just filming in the swamps of Louisiana last week, and um, and I'd wanted to do it. You know, do a thing with an alligator. But the brief, I always get a couple of days beforehand with all the search and rescue guys and the rangers. I get a really good briefing on everything. And, and they said, you know, kind of four or five foot is the maximum you can r realistically sort of, you know, wrestle. And um, I found a small three foot one, like, you know, showing you can only just <laughs> hold this thing. I thought, but, and it was the last day and I hadn't seen any alligators. And suddenly I just saw one that was about six and a half, seven foot. And I thought it was a bit bigger. And I'm, you know, kind of the briefing was, but it would be great to do. And, um, and I got this thing, and, and they kill by hitting with their tail and grabbing with their mouth at the same time, super fast like that. And then once they got you, then they'll roll and take you down. And um, so I was behind this thing trying to, you know, stay on its tail. And holding its tail, it's coming around snapping, and eventually you just have to kind of take that leap of plunge and just dive on this thing and just put all your weight on it, stop it rolling. Oh. And... Um, and then I, I got it like that, and I remember I had the knife above its head, and I said to the cameraman, you know, Simon, he's done all these shows with me, he's brilliant. I go, Simon, look, when I, this knife goes in, this thing is going to go absolutely <laughs> mad. And it's like your heart's kind of churning, and, 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 and it sort of works in any way. And then I, um, 
skinned it, ate it, rubbed the alligator fat in for the mosquitoes for my night there, and then um, <laughs> skinned it fat. for cordage for my camp. And our job was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's how you get rid of mosquitoes? Is it alligator body fat? Yeah, it's an old Indian trick. They used to smear all the alligator fat everywhere. And actually, it, it did work. I think it's because you just stink so much, probably. But how many bites did you still get? I mean, the mosquitoes, they, they don't... I, you know, actually, the bane of my life, this whole man versus wild madness, has actually been mosquitoes and fire ants. I mean, it's always the small things. You know, the big things you're always kind of prepared <laughs> yeah, for and plan yeah. well. And, but, um, uh, you know, if I could lose anything out of this whole show, it would be the mosquito bites. Right. But, you know, we've finished the season now. Cuts and grazes and mosquito bites heal, and it's all good, and we're A little open. malaria. Like, near New York. And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually a big fan of Man vs. Wild. Have some quinine. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and the two things that I, I love that uh, Bear Grylls did was uh, bite into the, the live fish, which was amazing. <laughs> And you said it tasted like the best sushi you've ever had, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I, I quite um, I quite like sushi. He he just bit the back off this fish. <laughs> and the other thing was, I think it was last season when you were living inside a camel's uh, carcass. Yeah, that was a low point. That actually. was that disgusting, was, uh, man. Luke Skywalker. Well, it's actually uh, I was with this Berber <laughs> tribesman, and one of them had said he'd survived by they got lost in a sandstorm. The only way he survived was by killing his camel, drinking the fluids from its rumen from one of its stomachs. And then in a sandstorm, sheltering inside the carcass. So um, I thought it'd be good to kind of show how you do that. You know, but it was all this fluid from its intestines was like stinking. <laughs> I remember getting inside this thing and I'd skinned it. Oh, so I got inside the carcass and pulled the skin over me. Yeah. And I'm sort of shouting, and this whole thing is sort of reverberating, going, This is how you shelter. <laughs> how, but actually, what was funny that night, I, I, I slept sort of outside. I used the sort of head as a, a pillow. Yeah. Jesus. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Wow. Yeah, this is one of you the know, better. No, it's great. It was completely I was unnecessary. On as well. were, I was on that anti, anti malaria drug that makes you hallucinate a little bit when you, you kind of have pretty wacky dreams. I kept having these dreams that this thing's coming back to life. So every time I moved, it would sort of expel air from its lungs. <laughs> <laughs> any any crap from the animal rights activists because you're you they, they would say you're doing this for a show are they giving you any grief well this was a berber tribesman and they will kill an old camel before it dies so then they can use it otherwise if it dies it's kind of the meat spoiled so they yeah. will do that anyway. how bad did it smell inside the uh the carcass there what? yeah bad i mean that you know yeah that worst smell be. ever um I, I i skinned a big yak in siberia on this last Whoa. season and was eating its eyeballs and um <laughs> And I never realized an eyeball could stink so much. Literally, a bit into it is like an explosion of blood yeah. and, and like oh. gristle in we his had, eyeball. It's and like was... Erox freshen up gum. <laughs> 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 That's uh, a little inside, but trust me, people out there are laughing, Bear. Uh, we had guys come in and eat eyeballs before, and what you don't realize is the lens is all crunchy right. and hard. You can't, you can't bite that uh, thing down. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually quite tough, an eyeball. I always sort of be like a hard-boiled egg, but right. no, it's... Um, uh, it yeah, depends it's, how old the kid is. <laughs> <laughs> There's some kind of, like, yeah, like yeah, old, old cellulite people have in there or something. Crunchy cataracts. Cellulose. <laughs> crunchy cataracts. Yeah, the corneas get crispy. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've been asked this a lot, but what's, uh, what's like, uh, the craziest thing you've eaten? Or the, the one thing um, you will never eat again or don't want to eat again? Read a I was in a... <laughs> 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 it's a long list, you know. Zambia's tomorrow night, which the season launches with that. And there was, uh, I was going through this dedication tree, showing how you can g eat the grubs or feed off this stuff. And I found these quite big ones, and they're wriggling around. And I just finished that, and I was walking off. And as I walked off, I pulled the last bit of dead wood away, and I saw this like monster one. It was literally like it was that long strong that thick wiggling and it was like i thought for a second in my mind do i show the cameraman and do this or i just leave it? i've done the bit should we just get on and i thought it's too big so i walked on and then about five yards i thought oh it's got it yeah it'd be great so i went back and i said look come and have a look at this this is a month this one's been living in here for years and um and yeah it's a good bit in the same bite and you see and all the blood and sort of pus just explodes over the camera oh my god and, um, hey, actually, what was disgusting. it I mean, a, grub, a big grub a, a grub, grub. Big, they're yeah, like a uh, sort of maggoty thing but actually another one was good last week which actually in the next season was in mexico and i i got hit by um i got stung by a load of bees i was trying to get honey out of this nest and literally my face just bal ballooned up massive how are you my trying to get honey out, out of the nest like where you well, thought you might not get stung. He just I had rolled a thing around my t-shirt around my thing. I was a smoker, just a load of wood burning with green leaves around. It. I smoked them out, and I got most of it. They came back, and they just whapped me. And my face looked—I couldn't see out of anything. I looked like the elephant man for half of this show. And um, I had to 
kill a big pit viper that, that night. And I, Simon was having to sort of direct me to tell me where this thing was, you know. Killed it, skinned it, um, and then peed inside the skin, tied a knot in that, had that around my neck, and then I was in the salt pans, <laughs> had to drink the pee out of the snake skin the next day. And it was that sort of mix of sort of warm pee with snake, Dale oh, snake in it. Oh, my God. And that was one of the first times I said, listen, it's time to get a new job. <laughs> right, right. God has damn. There, has there been anything that you uh, refused to do for this show? Um, Maybe something you were thinking, all right, I'll do this, and then uh, you backed out last minute and said, no way. Can I do this? Um, no, I, I kind of essentially it's what I, I, you know, I love it. I really, it's one thing that really excites me in my life. I really love my job. And um, I've been doing it since I was a kid. It's just I've never been filmed before doing it. And my stuff is often, they're going, Bear, we can't do that. We'll never get away with this. Or it's too mad. Or it's too. So often it's the other way. And I think, you know, I've got, you know, my considerations, I've always got a crew with me. I need to make sure that they can climb this thing. It's not too crazy. It's not going to take too long and this sort yeah. of stuff. So it tends to work the other way, really. But, um, I'm much more. I get much more kind of nervous in sort of big cities or big groups of people I don't know. Or I'm quite scared of heights a lot, and you know those. So it tends to be m more those sort of things that make me more awkward. I think you must be an easy guy to eat out with, though. It's like, what are you in the mood for? Uh, I don't hey. care. Just stops at a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find something in here. <laughs> you should do an urban version of Man vs. Wild. Well, we're going to. As I, a want goof. to um, I want to do a 3D feature film next year of disaster scenarios in New York. And how to how to basically survive if everything goes wrong. So stuck in burning elevators, your car goes off the bridge under the ice, you get mugged, your your ferry sinks, your subway gets stuck or whatever. And um, and so that's the plan for next year. It should be great. Would you and eat do garbage? It kind of like, would no. you eat garbage? Like, well, I mean, there are homeless guys that do it. Could you actually? Would that be like something that you just couldn't get yourself to do? Yeah, no, I think that'd be okay. You know, I mean, it's none of it. That's fun. You know, there's no fun <laughs> eating live snakes and garbage. You know, I'm not. Listen, I get home and I just love my boys make cakes with me, and I love all of that. I, I have no kind of grub cake. <laughs> I have no sort of nothing to prove it. At God, home how good? And, well, know, how good would cake taste after drinking your own urine out of a dead snake? Yeah. <laughs> listen, I get people go. Oh, you must be a nightmare to go on holiday with or whatever. But listen, I just love. I love being with my kids and bucket spade on the beach and nice mellow times. Sure. And, my wife looks at me in the bath with all the kids. She goes, God, if all these people could know how soft you really are with it all. So, you know, that's my work head. I, I jump out of that helicopter and I, I, I feel it every time something kind of goes and you get into that zone of doing what I've been trained to do and what I love, but then I get home and I'm very quickly into normal life. Hey, Bear, have you ever done um, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen is that noodling? You ever do that? I did it literally <laughs> last week. Really? Last week, oh, in Louisiana, I got probably, a big right? Big 30 pound catfish. You want to explain noodling? I, this, this is. That's yeah, so weird. You said this that. This separates the men from uh, the boys. If you think you're, yeah. if you're, if you but think again, you're a I'd tough dude. This, I'd had this briefing that, and they said, listen, you will, if you do some noodling and get into something big, you will know about it. And what you do, you, you go, it's in the swamp, so it's up to your waist. And under all of these trees, in all the roots, a big catfish, big snapper turtles hide. Yeah. And, um, and you put your hand right in, you just hope that you right don't get a little gator or... Bear. You can't see a thing because it's the no swamps, way. it's muddy. Listen, I got yes. the first I'd no. been doing it for about an hour, and eventually I got a, a nip from something. I came out, I thought, ow, but something's in there. And I went in again. And what you have to do, you have to commit to it, because it, it swallows your whole arm. <laughs> and you get it right down, so it's up you, to here. And then you just grab its innards and pull out. Give me old pink it, sock. <laughs> <laughs> pink sock again. But it's one of those, and <laughs> I hadn't really, I kind of thought this would be fine. Smells and then better. the cameraman, Simon, <laughs> said to me, he said, Bear, listen, I would never do this. This is one thing I could not, uh, you know, I've watched you do a lot of things. This would terrify me. And as soon as he said that, I thought, he's right, I can't do this. You know, and it was, I hadn't really thought about it before. I suddenly kind of got the fear of it. And I just had this nip, you know. But I went for it, and this thing just clamped on, and their huh. jaws are like real sandpaper. What is it? Thousands of tiny, tiny little teeth. Catfish. Yeah, catfish. And, I like, mean, they're you know, giant. Like the anticipation of waiting for something to bite exactly your arm would be I, like, I, exactly. I, I, I could not even. People step the water, on them? You know. Did people step on them too? You're in the yeah, mud. Yeah, definitely. We were stepping lots of baby alligators and stuff and catfishes. In <laughs> yeah, just walking just, around a swamp, that's, that, that's crazy. Well, can you imagine putting no. your arm in one of these holes and, and waiting no, for the no, anticipation no of something getting bit bite by you. something huge and then yanking Listen, it out? I'm not doing it again. That's my the, noodling career over. <laughs> and they're making this illegal in a lot of places because that's how they, they fish for the catfish. It's the easiest way to get them. Yeah, I'd rather just... No, yeah. Not a very but nimble it does, fish. It, it, it throw literally dynamite strips in. the skin off your, off your <laughs> fingers and stuff. It's, you know, it's not... It's not fun. No. Not a very nimble fish. <laughs> <laughs> very you can catch a fish by grabbing his appendix. <laughs> well, no, because they're, they're stuck in there. They're, they're, they're wedged in. These 
these little kind of root canals. Oh uh, yeah, here's here's a I guess a video that somebody, uh, somebody uh, doing found some noodling. someone noodling. There, there you oh, go. Look at that. That's God. insane. There you go. That's exactly it. Well, put that video up on onaradio.com. Uh, that's crazy. Some sort of glove. I mean, that was a baby one, you know. You did, yeah. There you go. Look, that's more how it did is. Did you use You're a right glove like or that. anything, Bear? You see what? Great did Larry the Cable Guy is uh, no, no. noodling. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's exactly how it is. You got your neck right down for some good. Um, Why would you do that? You, you yeah, nailed it, though. The ride. anticipation and the fear has got to be just. I, I don't no, know I, how you. It can was a real that. case of. I hadn't really thought about it until. The cameraman goes, but this is the one thing I can oh do. Oh, my God. Suddenly, yeah. How do you know there's not, don't they have like poisonous snakes, like water moccasins and stuff like that? <laughs> a lot of water moccasins. All you know is the water moccasin. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. In yeah. the water? <laughs> so, yeah. That's the only one I know. That's, that's Billy's, well, that's that's Bill's know like extent to his, no, yeah. but I just, it's just always like the water moccasin. Yeah. <laughs> Bill's a nature hack. <laughs> <laughs> They're horrible snakes. They just cost them out. They got something poisonous, like a rattlesnake? One of them sidewinders? Diamond head. What was that again, Bear? I was, just, I was just saying they're the only one of the few snakes that will go for you. So in the swamps, generally as you move, you'll see a snake fall off and just disappear. But the water moccasins have a white mouth, and you'll see them come out, open the mouth at you. That's so you crazy. know it's a nice one. They'll come towards. So those ones cool. you need to do a lot of kind of you see, get out of the way, you, you brute. You see any of those? Uh, what are they down there? Tasmanian devils or whatever? They got those the people that believe that there's some weird creature in the swamps there. No, just a few of the kind of hillbilly rangers <laughs> <laughs> who are doing our stuff. <laughs> wow. So obviously, uh, uh, man versus wild, Louisiana. Where else do you go this? Well, actually, season? that's for the next next season. But this season we did. Two oh, you're shows. already a season ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. This one was. Um, Two shows in Siberia in wintertime, daily minus 35. And actually, that was one place a lot of the guys who sort of seem to enjoy the show had said they would love to see you go to Siberia in winter. And it's, t you know, it is tough there where, you know, there's not a lot of room to make mistakes in minus 35. So that was a tough one. We did two in Indonesia, we did a swamp one and then a desert island one. And then we did two in Africa, which is t tomorrow night, Zambia and Namibia. Um, Zambia was interesting with that. I got eight, um, <laughs> bit of a dodgy snake and got really bad diarrhea and uh <laughs> dodgy and stroke snake. and i was i was halfway up a rock face i was off 90 foot big waterfall and i had i had like to Willy go Wonka's oh, joint. No. <laughs> i see so i had to go and i set the camera and said turn the camera off i've got, oh, I've got no. go. and there's a shot where i'm hanging with like one arm trying to pull my trousers down doing diarrhea into free air <laughs> you know, thinking this I is you know, oh, chocolate rain <laughs> right but um yeah oh my god anyway he had nice to go as he <laughs> <York. Just a laughs> he do? I hope they didn't I hope they didn't dump out of that but, but you know he's hanging and uh and he had a, he had a go and so he did yeah, do number two yeah, they did wow. fuzz it they fuzzed the actual that's, ground, you know. that's, that's a good Pepto-Bismol commercial <laughs> yeah right no you know they always do that thing about how human beings are ruining the environment they would show bulldozers knocking over trees that just would have been a great clip some guy hanging from a waterfall that says it all a rooster tail just coming out of the back says it all <laughs> hey hey bear what's the what is the uh the number one thing you've you've done the create I, I don't want to say craziest again but uh like the one thing that really impresses people when you tell them i i did that is it the mount everest climb or i don't think everest was that uh you yeah, did. Everest was special for me, you know, being a mountain that had been such a big part of my life since I was, you know, growing up and, you know, it, it had a cost, you know, we lost four people up there and hmm. I think it sort of rocks your confidence a little bit that, but um, I'm proud of my kids, they're cool, um, I, I love this show, you know, I, the show, these shows especially, I'm really proud of these ones, we've, you know, we've gone to some of the toughest locations we've ever filmed in. Mm -hmm. You know, the crew, I've got the same crew now. It's taken me a while to really build you know, the right guys for this. And they're brilliant. You know, they're real unsung heroes, all of this. They put up with some seriously sort of beef mm. conditions. Right. And, um, and, it's, and it's been tough, you know, the, the, the cold and the heat. And um, we were in Sumatra where these crocs, where the tsunami hit. And all of this lowland just dropped, and it's all now this black swamp, and it's full of these man-eating crocs who've been feeding off 65,000 human corpses after the tsunami oh. hit there. So oh. they've seriously got the gonna taste of it. I've seen, a little it, for, taste, I've seen yeah. it for five days in this place, and it's like, um, <clears throat> wow. They're going to have you know, The hard thing there is dodging, there. These, dodging these you know, nasty crocodiles. Hey, how do you pitch a show like that? I mean, you've got to take it to the next level from the last guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, um, well I d they kind of... I never, genuinely, I never wanted to really get into TV. I was doing my stuff. I was in the army. I was doing my expeditions. And Discovery came three times. The producer came and said, "Can we just do a film where we drop you in some film? Show us how you get out of things." And I, if I'm honest, I didn't really have the confidence. I don't think to do TV. I thought I can do my stuff, and I, 
I haven't got white teeth and I'm not sort of good looking and fit. And I, I just, I oh, didn't, come didn't on. feel like that. And I said no three times. Fishing for compliments now. And he said eventually. <laughs> hey, you said, know, I'm um, just a regular old bloke. <laughs> he said, uh, he said <laughs> noodling for compliments. He's doing that Hugh Grant modesty. I don't <laughs> right. buy it. No, I'm not buying it either. <laughs> every, girl, <laughs> every girl in America wants to bang this dude. Hey, they just keep giving <laughs> me <laughs> movies, you know. Yeah, never, just, it's just... never like that. I don't see that side of it. But listen, he said, um, <laughs> you don't need to be a slick host. You don't need to be smart or tidy or yeah. together. Just do your stuff, whether it works, whether it's covered in mud or whatever the failures the good the bad or the ugly and um, stick your arm and, and we did it and it hole. kind of worked from there but it's um it, what, yeah. what amazes me that uh, lawyers haven't gotten involved and messed this show up all right like they yeah. do everything else in entertainment uh, the liability hey, that's a liability hey, issue hey we got to get out of here uh we're running out of show but uh, we haven't even really promoted the book uh, it's a man versus wild book which uh, obviously is self-explanatory survival techniques well, from the most dangerous the, um, places on earth there's a lot of the kind of um you know, each show for us takes six days to film, and it gets condensed down to an hour. And the books, a lot of the kind of, you know, other stuff that we, you know, have used behind the scenes stuff and how we, you know, get out of trouble, basically. It's actually cool. It's like a, it's almost like a social studies book. It's like a big, heavy uh, color, like a lot of photos. And, you know, our listeners like photos. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good book for the bathroom. You sit on the loo and kind of read about how to um, survive snake attacks. And how, to, how to bite into a zebra. <laughs> no, it'll yeah, all of no. that good thing. Sit on the loo. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. Yeah, look at this, look at this oh, picture. Uh -huh. Him just biting into a zebra. <laughs> oh. What the? Yeah, there's a photo. <laughs> you know, this is what kills me. They tell me that, oh, you better wipe down. You had raw chicken on the table. <laughs> this guy's right. chewing on a zebra's ass. He's fine over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's because they didn't cut its nose off and stick it in like a little two foot by two foot zebra cage <laughs> i think that's where you get the salmonella from it's those little cages <laughs> guy's eating rat's ass he's right. fine we, we have to go on uh bear grills from man vs wild thank you for stopping by we uh we, we appreciate and it the book is called man vs wild yep. survival techniques from the most dangerous places on earth what uh, channel a uh, Discovery Channel. Right. New season starts when? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. There you go. New season starts now, right? They have great stuff now, yeah. on that channel. Oh, and and uh, Bill Burr, thanks for stopping by. Thank he you. Helium Comedy Club tonight, tomorrow and Saturday in Philly. Nick DiPaolo, always a pleasure. You got the brokerage tonight and Governor is Friday and Saturday. That's Look at right. that, remembering yeah, everything. I want to plug this show real quick. Sure. If, uh, the HBO show I'm hosting, we're shooting uh, two nights. It's May 21, 22 in New Jersey at the Bergen Performing Arts Center. Jim Norton Show at BroadwayVideo.com. Just send an email. Tickets are free. Uh, four shows, so you get to see two shows shot when you, uh, when you go. All right, we'll see uh, Jimmy uh, on Monday. Bear, once again, thank you.